There we go. All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show um, as we are doing today, and then it is posted to our archives for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll get into showing you the archives, um, how to get in the archives at the end of today's show. Um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in um, any of our topics we have on Encompass Live. We probably don't have people not from Nebraska here today, but just in case, um, the Library Commission, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. So we provide services and training and programming to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, uh, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, uh, really anything and, any, and everything. Um, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, we bring in guest speakers to um, present on Encompass Live sometimes from all across the country, but we also have Library Commission staff that come on and do presentations for us, and that is what we have today. Today you have um, almost all of the Library Development Department <laughs> uh, um, here today with us, um, and that, that's my department too. Uh, in addition to hosting our Encompass Live here, I am um, the Library Development Director and we in library development, we handle um, issuing the Library Commission grants to public libraries and state-run institutions in the state. We have a grant program that we run pretty much all every year, um, almost all the grants every year. Some years we've had to skip some. And uh, today we are going to talk about the grants that we have coming up for next year, for 2024. Um, in all of our programs we have. And with me today is um, Sally Snyder. Good morning, Sally, who is our coordinator of Children's and Youth Services. Um, and she handles our youth grants. And um, Holly Duggan, good morning, Holly. And she is our CE coordinator and she has, handles our continuing education and training grants. Um, there's one more person in the department, um, Mary Geibel. She's our administrative assistant and she's not here with us today. She handles all the paperwork and everything behind the scenes for us to make sure we can keep all these grants going. Uh, all right, so I am going to um, pop over to our main Library Commission website to start today. Uh, so I can show you how to get to um, our grants if you do go to our library website. Um, when we do share out that the grants are open, like here's our blog post about grants opening for applications. Um, they did actually all open um, last Friday on um, September 15th. So all of these grants are now available. They opened for applications. At, it was at the end of the day. We had a lot of last minute behind uh, things we had to do with some of the forms and whatnot to get them working. Um, but they did open up that at uh, the end of the day on Friday, September 15th. So we post, I posted about that. Um, and from there you'll link, um, you'll find links directly to all the different grant pages. But in case you're just here on the library website, um, you can find them over, um, you can search for grants, NLC grants if you want to up here. Um, if you type that in, it will come up with grants. And then um, there's our grant this year, the grant commission, yeah, library commission grant schedule is what it's called. And that brings us to the main grants website for all of our grants that we offer through the commission. There is also a flyout menu here when you're anywhere on the Library Commission website, this men these menus here are here on the left and you can click on grants and it's for grants, funding, all sorts of ways to get money for your library, <coughs> excuse me, for your library. And over here is our NLC related grants and this top link here about NLC grants will bring you to this same Library Commission grant schedule page. Um, you'll see here there's lots of other links to other grants we've given out recently as well. Um, so if you're interested in previous gr um, grants that we've done, ARPA, CARES, um, and then there are specific links to each of our Library Commission offered grants too. Um, community Education, um, Internship, Library Improvement, and Youth Grants for Excellence. Those are the four main grants that the Library Commission does every year, and those are the four grants that we are going to talk about today. 
Uh, all right, so as I said, there are four grants and we used to do them on a staggered schedule. Um, different grants do opening up and being due different uh, times of the year, different months. But last year we switched to doing them all at the same time and it seemed to work. Uh, so we're sticking with that again. Um, all of our grants opened last Friday, September 15th. All of our grants are due November 17th. And you will know by the end of the year, December 31st, at the latest, possibly before then, um, if you are going to receive a grant, um, depending on which ones you applied for. So they're all on the same schedule. Uh, we think it's much easier uh, to keep track of rather than trying to remember which one is due which day. Um, some of our libraries, you have the same people applying for these grants. So having to keep track of all the different deadlines and everything we decided, let's not worry about that. Um, other deadlines like completion reports and submitting um, paperwork and whatnot, that might be different, but as far as applying um, and being notified, we're keeping this all to the same schedule for all four of our grants. Um, and let's just uh, start, I think we just start at the top. These are just listed, not in the, they're just listed in alphabetical order here. There's no you know, rhyme or re reason beyond that for um, how they are listed. Uh, so let's just start at the top with the CE Continuing Education and Training Grants. Um, Holly, if you want to talk about uh, yours, I can go to that page and you can uh, yep. guide me through where, where to click and what to do. Uh, you just want to click on it, yeah. obviously. <laughs> um, so this is just a short description of the grants, but then um, down below is the, there's the grant information and then there's the previous grant database if you'd ever want to go back and see. Mm -hmm what other conferences, courses, or other projects that some libraries or librarians have gotten in the past for this grant. Um, mm -hmm. But if you just want to click on the information, we can start there. Um, so for these CE grants, we're trying to focus on improving library service through continuing education opportunities um, that you can take back to your library and improve your library work day to day or bigger projects um for training multiple staff members um, sometimes like this last round we focused on just arsl conference but this round we're opening it up to online learning courses conferences and workshops and bigger projects for training staff members mm -hmm. um, for this round of ce grants because of the way um, budget years work um, these will be for applications for courses, conferences that will be done before July 1st. So anything occurring January 1st to July 1st of 2024, these are the CE grants applications. Um, we've divided these into the three different sections. And that is something that's new. I'll point out too, if anybody is wondering about, they've never heard that before. We started that up just last year for the first time. Yep. yep. Um, we were we were having trouble here with like, like I said the different uh, funding year or fiscal years where the money comes from to pay for which grants and right. we thought libraries might too so there's two rounds of grants the first one is here and then I think last year we opened in March for the second round which would be after July anything after July 1st so there'll right. be a second round of grants a second application period opening up for these grants and this is for these grants only it's the only one that yeah. does that <laughs> um, that so if you're looking for doing something after July 1st in 2024 wait for that second round to open up right so hopefully you're not trying to plan you know next fall conferences and <laughs> next year's ARSL when it's happening today yeah so hopefully that makes things easier but um anything before July 1st is what you apply for this time um and we have this divided into the three different sections so the first thing you'll see on the web page is for the online learning these are for any online courses that you might want to take. Um, some of the courses, examples, you know, Library Juice Academy, ALA, any of the ALA divisions, Info People, um, other courses can be applied for and taken just as long as your application shows how it re relates to your work as a librarian or in a library. Um, so this could be you know, some of the management classes, or we've had people take um, like grants writing, a course on how to write a grant, yeah. or some people have taken um, Spanish speaking for libraries. Um, so really just in that application, um, 
just let us know how this helps you in your work and it doesn't need to be uh, restricted to just those ALA courses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these um, are examples, yeah, that says your other things too. Um, I know something new that other, and we've started getting into it too, I know you have Holly, other states are using and offering some things, um, training through Niche Academy. Right. Um, and there's some things in there that are um, free and available to anybody um, mm -hmm. around the country. So that might be a place to go looking for um, library related things as well. Right, I should add that example too on their website, but, um, and that goes for if you're an individual taking just a course, you would apply for the online learning. But if you're looking for maybe a larger staff training that's down below, it's a different application. Um, the courses, they don't include if you're taking any college or academic, other academic courses for credit, that's not covered by this grant. Um, this is just professional development C kind of courses. Um, like all the grants to apply, you need to be um, employed or a board member of an accredited public library or state-run institutional library. And uh, if you're wondering about that, as you can see, we do have a link that explains right. that lists who those are. <laughs> um, so if you're wondering what we mean by that, this is for um, many of the grants. Uh, we've decided that things, places like this, regional centers, veterans homes, correctional centers, uh, women's correctional center, youth correction, youth rehab and treatment centers, um, all of these are eligible for um, our grants when it says they're listed there. Right. Um, and these, for both conference and the online courses, are reimbursement grants. Mm -hmm. So you, you'll apply for the grant, you get it, yay. Um, then you're responsible for taking the course, registering, completing the course, um, or attending the conference, making all your own travel plans. And then once the course or the conference is done, then you'll request reimbursement from us. So there's not, I don't make any travel plans or <laughs> registration plans. Nope. Um, so that's one thing to just kind of keep in mind. Um, then for conferences and workshops, they really work the same way. Um, it can be a virtual or in-person conference. Um, eligible costs can be registration, travel, mileage, um, hotels, registration fees. The only thing that it doesn't cover are some of those social and networking events that happen sometimes that are extra. Mm -hmm. um, they need to be sponsored by a professional library organization or association, um, Oregon. If it's outside of a library association, it just you just need to show on the application how it relates to your library or how it will improve your library and service in, to your community. Um, so again, if you're looking at maybe a technology conference, that's awesome, but you just need to explain to us what you're hoping to bring back to your library. Um, same thing about being qualified as a Nebraska public library um so then down the third section is the bigger ce and training projects these would be for funding for like a staff training project multiple staff members um again it would need to be an accredited public library you can partner with other community organizations or agencies mm -hmm. but um the accredited public library would need to be the one who submits the application. Um, we have some previous projects like the ALA road trip, the trustee training, um, and again, you can go to the grants database if you wanna see some more of those, or in-service day, we've had that. Um, board members, volunteers, advocates of the libraries, other supporters can be included in the training. Um, but each of these grants also require that 25% um, match. Um, just for this one. Right, just for that one. For the, the conferences training. and the training. online learning courses, they don't require the match. It's just these larger training projects that do. Um, so then down below at the bottom are the different applications. Um, that first one, if you click on that one's for individuals, so if you're an individual applying for just yourself to take an online class 
or to attend a conference or a workshop, that's the application you'll use. So this is for the first two, they have the same right. form. Yeah. Yep. And going through this, that, that short justification, that's where you're explaining, you know, this is what I want to take. This is how it's going to help service in my library. This is what I'm hoping to learn. Um, and then your estimated expenses. Um, you might just have to look at, especially for conferences, you might have to look at like previous year to get an estimate, estimate mm -hmm. of what the registration costs might be. And that's fine to estimate. Um, again, this is a reimbursement grant, so at the end of it, you'll submit the actual expenses. And it's um, okay if they don't match up exactly, because right. we know this far ahead, you've got to, you pretty much have to guess. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, obviously, if you're taking an online course, you won't have the lodging and meals and things, so you can just put a zero in there, and then just submit the application. Um, and we also need... So it's linked here and it's linked on the previous page, but that acknowledgement and indication of support form. Um, I'll need a copy of this. You can just fax or email it to me and filled out saying that, you know, this is name, this is what I'm applying for, and then either have your director sign it or um, your board president, just depending on um, if you're a director or not. Just saying that the library knows that you're applying for this grant and supports you attending. And then, so if you go back to- And then this is an online form. There's a little button, I haven't scrolled down yet, <clears throat> to where you submit the application. Right. Whoops. Oop. There we go. Okay. And then it's the that acknowledgement form is also linked right there, that second link. Um, so then that number three, that grant application, that is the application for the larger staff training projects. Um, you can see it's a lot more detailed um, going through what the project is, what, what the goals are for this training. Um, describe sort of the timelines, what CE need, is this project based on um, who's going to be involved? How are you going to evaluate the training? Um, <clears throat> then again, so then the budget you'll have filled out um, with your with cost, training equipment, um, and then that local 25% match again. And then if you have questions filling out this budget portion of it just let me know and we can walk through it um otherwise just more about the costs and then again online forms so submitted at the bottom and for these projects we also have a signature page as well um again just for the library director the project director if it's not the library director and the board president again saying we all know about this project we're all in support of it and we're we're ready to go forward with it um big programs like this a big project you definitely need to make sure you your director and board are on uh, and library board president are aware and on the same page with you all <laughs> um so is there any questions about applying for either grant or either the individual grants or the larger staff training grants. Yeah, did anybody have any questions about the CE and continued education grants? Um, what's um, another thing I was thinking about about these two is that's good for them. Um, if you are a library staff member or board member looking to earn continued education credits, CE credits that you need to keep your certification, um, your librarian certification or your uh, library board certification this is a way to earn those ce credits you can earn ce for attending these things that you um get a grant for yeah right. <laughs> so we can cover the cost for you to attend something like um like we're talking about the arsl conference is starting today if someone's attending that multi-day conference that's a lot of ce hours to earn um so uh this uh 
you could have used this grant to attend and um, any conference and then submit it as a continuing education and then get all those hours. Okay. Especially with the number of virtual conferences now. Um, oh, yeah. It'll cover virtual attendance mm -hmm. or some conferences you might not be able to attend the live sessions, but they have those recordings available so that yep. you can go back and catch any ones you miss. That's additional CE hours. You don't have to just submit, you know, just the live session. Yeah. ARSL happening right now has both a virtual and, and in person options. I mean, so some have both some, yeah. So look for things to do. All right. I don't see any other questions coming in um, about this one. That's okay. cool. Um, if you do come up yeah, with any questions, you do anything later, yeah, type it in or um, you know, reach out to Holly, you know where to find her. <laughs> um, so back to our grants. Um, the next two are <clears throat> the grants that I'm in charge of, the internship grants and the library improvement grants, um, which are our federal funds. Um, and oh, I'll specify too, these, these grants are a combination of state funds from the um, State of Nebraska and federal. Um, the CE internship and youth grants are all done using state funds and the library improvements use federal funds. Um, so there are sometimes some different um, rules and requirements between them depending on where the money is coming from. So you'll see the LSGA one <coughs> library improvement may look a little different than the others. So I'm going to jump into our internship grants webpage here. It's on our Now Hiring at Your Library website. So um, lots of information here about becoming a librarian, scholarships, education, et cetera. But here at the Library Commission, we offer an internship grant where we will give you either a $500 or $1,000 to pay an intern to come and work at your library for a particular period of time. Uh, the idea of this grant is, try, is ultimately to try and uh, encourage people to become librarians, people who are not yet. Um, it is for high school or college students. So to um, show them what it's like being a librarian, what they can do in a library, the kind of things you do. Um, you can do an internship with just generally, here's a little bit of everything we do, or it can be an internship specifically for a for a specific project. Like I just need an intern, and this is very common, to help me run the summer reading program because that's huge every summer. Um, or maybe I need an intern to get our website presence up and working or, and our social media presence. And that's gonna be their main project the whole time they're here. Um, it could be anything um, that you want them to do. Uh, this is also a, 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 a Nebraska Public Libraries are eligible to apply for it. You can partner, and we do recommend um, uh, link uh, partnering um, with any other types of uh, organizations, public. So this one is just for Nebraska Public Libraries, but you can partner with a school, um, a special library. You could have the intern do like a, a field day, a field trip day to maybe if you're the public library to the local college library, so they can see a little bit about how that works. Um, you can have it be a whole 50-50 thing. Half the time they're at the public library, half the time they're at the academic library, trying to learn a little bit of that. Um, so you can get very creative with um, how you want it to, um, your in, what you want your intern to do. Um, as I said, they have to be high school or college student um, and cannot have ever been employed as a, as a library staff person. Um, either currently working in a library or previously can never have been employed. But you, if you've had a previous intern, you can have them come back again. We've we've had that before. Um, people had a really good intern last year and they wanted to use the same person again. That's perfectly fine. Um, and we also will allow volunteers. If you have a library volunteer who now wants to you know, move up a little more, maybe they're saying, you know what, this is something I'd really like to do possibly as a career, or I'm more interested in being paid a little bit. If you're, free, if you're a person who was previously a volunteer, they can then become an intern and get paid um, through the grant. Um, we have some uh, basic guidelines here. Like I said, the grants are either <coughs> $500 or $1,000. Um, you can decide whether, you know, they'll depend on um, how many hours you might need someone to work. Um, and you can also have, um, one person work and do the full intern or you can have two if you want you can have up to hire up to two people with our grants um i'd recommend of course going for the thousand dollar um then they each get paid 500 um for that um, we have some good information here about tricks tips and tricks and different things about doing internships that you can look into 
um, to get more idea about how it works to just run an internship. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, for paying your interns, um, you can do a stipend-based internship, um, or you can hire the library as a, the, the intern as a library employee, just like anyone else. The difference between those two would be how the taxes and FICA and all of that is handled. Um, if you hire them just as a regular part-time employee, then your your um, HR people, your whoever hires people for the library would handle all that. All the taxes would be taken out automatically the way they normally are for any other employee. Um, if you do it as a stipend where you just give them all of the money, the interim, then they would have to make sure that they handle um, paying the taxes on whatever they got paid if, if it's required. Um, you do have to meet minimum wage requirements for this. Um, and hopefully, as everyone knows, in Nebraska, there is a new minimum wage law gone into effect last year where the minimum wage is going to be increased. Oh, I don't know, remember exactly when it ends, but it's going up every year. Um, right now, starting January 1st of 2024, so that's, you know, this would be a 2020 a grant for 2024. So um, as of January 1st, the minimum wage will increase to $12 an hour. So you will, if you're going to do a stipend-based internship and pay them that way, you will need to pay um, $12 an hour. Um, you can hire interns who are students who are younger. Um, there is, there are rules in the state of Nebraska for hiring, um, in um, hiring anyone um, who are age 14 or 15. And when under the age of 16, there are um, laws about how many hours they can work, when they can work. You do have to uh, complete a form um, that goes through the school. So the school handles handling, submitting this form, the form 110. Um, about uh, that they will be working and there's a link here we have to the Department of Labor website where you can get that form if you're hiring someone who's that young. Um, you are allowed to pay students a training wage if you want to of just 75% of Nebraska's minimum wage, which starting in January will be $9 an hour if you want to. Um, but of course, if you pay the full minimum wage, it'll give you more, you know, possibly more um, interest in um, interns applying for this job. Uh, there are some uh, rules here about what you do after you are um, approved for the internship um, grant. I will I send out a document that has links to lots of different, um, lots more information about running the internship um, forms that need to be submitted by you and by the intern. There's a starting off form a before I start this internship um, survey I, that the intern would submit, and then at the end of the internship and end of the um, you know afterwards, what did I learn form, and then as the um, whoever your, the supervisor of the intern is has to also submit a um, completion form or, you know, at the end of the internship about, about the intern themselves and then about the internship program in general. And I'll send you a document with all that information after if you've been approved for an internship grant. Um, this is an online form, um, just like the CE one, and it is um, open here and it is some basic information, basic information about your library. If there's gonna be a, specific, a different person than you who's the supervisor, you put that in here. Which kind of grant do you want? How much money do you want a $500 or $1,000? Are you gonna hire one or two interns? And then um, some basic plans about what you're gonna do. We wanna know a little bit, um, not just we want an extra staff person, which everybody does, <laughs> but what are your plans? What are you thinking of using them for specifically? You know, you gotta think ahead of like, well, how can I actually use this person um, in the library? What would be the most beneficial for what we're doing um, next year in the library? Um, a couple of schedule. Now, none of this stuff has to be, you know, in stone, of course, you know, schedule and timelines and whatnot, of course, will change. Um, we've had many libraries who had to do that where once they got the person and they realized, oh, they have a really good skill, they're really good at this, and we didn't know, so let's switch up what they're going to do. You know, they're really good at working with the kids, but we we're going to have them work on the library website. Maybe we'll switch them over to working with the, the children's programming instead, um, or the opposite. Uh, so this is just making sure that you've thought about it ahead of time. Um, but if you need to change it up, you just let me know and we can do that. Um, and this application form, there is no there's no separate things you have to mail in separately to me um, for this one like there is for the CE that that works differently. Um, you just uh, you sign officially here on the application form. So you enter um, the library name, whoever is um, submitting this and their title and then save and submit the application.
Um, and a copy of this will be sent to you, to your email address, whatever email address um, you've put at the top of the form here, so you'll have a copy of it as well. Uh, you can also here for our um, internships, just this is a, before my time, um, a list of the previous grant winners for internships have their own page. So you can see here which libraries over the years have received internship grants. So if you're wondering how you might do an internship, and you've never done one before, um, you could, I, I'm sure any of these libraries would be, would welcome um, you reaching out to them and asking for some advice and, you know, uh, suggestions, um, et cetera. All right. Any questions about the internship grants? Type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface if you're wondering about getting one. <clears throat> no? Oh, wait. Of oh, course, something comes in as soon as I paper to pay training um oh good question yeah, i don't know i had never okay is the question is this one typed in is there any additional paperwork if you decide to pay the training wage um no um there's nowhere that you have to like report that that's how much you've paid them. Um, obviously with whatever paperwork your HR people whoever does that would submit saying what you pay any staff that's where that would be reported as usual, but there's no special reporting that you um, have to do if you chose to do that. Um, you just decide in-house internally, this is how much we're going to pay this particular person. But that's a good question. Nobody's ever asked that before. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. If you have any qu other questions or anything about the anything else about the internship grant, reach out to me about those. And back to our main grants page here. All right. So next up is our library improvement grants. This is where we uh, give out our federal uh, funding to libraries. And I am in charge of this one as well. Um, and you'll see here for this one and for the youth grants, uh, you're going to have this little uh, in-between page, I guess I'd say, uh, um, before you get to the main page for this year's um, grants. Um, this is because we have done um, previous grants. Right now, the last year's library improvement grants are still wrapping up. Libraries are still um, possibly working on their grants um, and are still um, going to be submitting the completion report at the end of the grant period for that one. So we'll have this in, in between page. So if you are do have a grant from this year, this would be where you would go to finish up and submit that completion report. If you want to submit a new grant application for next year, then you click, of course, here, the 2024 Library Improvement Grants. So our library improvement grants is, as I said, it's our federal LSTA funding. So this, we do have, this money comes from the Institute of Museum and Library Services um, through the um, Library Services and Technology Act. Um, so this is specifically for libraries to improve their programming and improve their facilities um, in certain ways um, to do, you know, provide better service to uh, their um, users. We do have a, um, if you want to read into the really deep details about it, there is a, an LSJ subgrant policies and procedures manual. This is a subgrant from um, that we give out to libraries. So we receive here at the Library Commission um, a grant, grant um, states grants to states grant um, monies from I'm the um, IMLS, and then we use that to fund some of our programming here at the commission, but also some of that money goes to um, this grant program, so it's a sub-grant that you all are receiving from us. If you want to read up more about that, you can look at the manual if you want to. Um, accredited public libraries and those institutional libraries that I mentioned are eligible. Um, we highly recommend if you want to, um, you can partner with other organizations if, so, if you want to work with um, 
you know, Nebraska Extension Office or someone that's not a public library or the public library and the school library want to do something together that the, I mentioned previously academic, but if you wanted to work with the uh, K-12 school and do something together, totally can do that. Public library, of course, has to be the main applicant um, and at least half of what's going on in the grant has to be done at the public library, but you can definitely um, have someone you partner with. Um, for this grant, uh, the this is this is rules come through um, LSTA for us that any purchases made after the the time the grant opened are eligible for reimbursement. We already had someone ask about this about regard, regarding the um, youth grants, and they're following the same rules that we're using here. So from the date that the um, if you're th you're already thinking of doing something, you already want to, needed to purchase something now, or you know there's deadlines or something's on sale, whatever, you can definitely purchase it before you apply for the grant and before you receive the grant if you want to. Um, However, there's no guarantee that you'll get the grant you apply for. So do keep that in mind if you do decide to purchase something ahead of time, like now, um, hoping that you'll get the grant. There's no guarantee um, that you'll get it. And we also do give out partial grants for this. Uh, so you may apply for, here's my full project, here's what I want to do. And we may just have to decide also for budget issues from our side. Well, we can give you a partial grant. We'll pay for 50% of it and you'll have to cover the other 50 because we just don't have that much funding. Um, so do keep that in mind if you do decide to purchase things before you know if you have the grant, that's okay. Uh, but be aware you might not get the grant or you might not get the full grant. Um, you do have to request your grant funds by August 15th of next year. Um, at the, at, that's the deadline to do that, and you have to spend them by September 30th of next year. Um, and then there is a final completion report that you will submit, and that will be due November 1st of next year. That's all done online as well. So as you can see right now, the 2023 grants are doing all of this. I'm getting lots of these reports coming in now. <laughs> um, all right. So there are some things that are not eligible um, for this. Uh, there's lots of things you can do by computers, by um, equipment, uh, something for a program you want to do. Um, so this is, um, you know, thinking more about the physical things you might need in the library or a special program or event you want to run and you need funding to run that program. Uh, but there are some things that due to federal rules are ineligible. Food and beverages, can't, we can't fund any of that. Um, sales tax, uh, public libraries in Nebraska are um, um, tax exempt from sales tax. So you should not be paying sales tax anyways. So we would not cover any of that if it happens to go through. Um, construction, um, I'll get into the construction. I've got notes down here. Um, it's a, there's certain little things, things, things you can do, um, but there are some rules about that. Um, you need to be, if you do want to buy computers, going on to the next item here, in for your library, that's okay, but you do have to be SIPA compliant. So that does mean, I do have a little note down here, having filtering filters on your computers. Anything that, um, any federal funding you receive from any source, if you receive federal funding, you have to be SIPA compliant. Um, that's for our grants, other federal grants, E-rate funding, all of that, that's just a rule comes down from the federal government. Um, this means having filters on your computers that block um, uh, things, minors from accessing illegal and um, bad things on the internet uh, in general. We have a lot more information on our specific page about that. I'm not going to go into a huge deep dive on this, but it's just filtering. Um, we do have something new here through the Library Commission, however, that I highly recommend you look into. We are now providing a filtering solution at no cost to you. It's free to the library. DNS filtering. Um, that you can um, get through us. So if you do need to have a filter for either the purpose of this grant, other federal funding, um, E-rate purposes, you can, uh, we've got a whole website about this here. Uh, Sherm, um, Sherman, Andrew Sherman is our new, we started earlier this year, library technology support specialist, and he has uh, come up with this new program where we can use DNS filter and we are paying for it for any public library in the state to have this filter. So I highly recommend if you don't know anything about filters or you're wondering, we don't have one yet, how do we do it? Or you're not sure what your current one is doing at all, <laughs> um, reach out to Sherm about this and he will get you set up with a free filter that does meet um, federal requirements and E-rate requirements um, for meeting that SIPA compliance. So if you do want to purchase computers, that's okay, but you got to make sure you're SIPA compliant. In your application form, when you submit the application form for this grant, there is a link where you, a box you check saying, yes, we are SIPA compliant. Um, so you'll, uh, 
fill us that in the application form. Um, general entertainment programs that are not educational in nature you can't do. Um, most library programs are educational by default, but um, giveaways are not eligible, just you know something with a library name on it. Um, no built-in furniture. This goes along with construction. Um, anything you do purchase must be able to be moved, not fixed to the wall. So carpeting, built-in um, bookcases that are permanently attached to the wall, um, doing a renovation of your library building and put, adding on an addition, all that kind of thing, anything that's permanent, capital programs, that is not allowable through LSTA rules. Um, you can't use it for advocacy, social activities, um, um, and PR in general of library services, but you can do programming specifically for something that you've used LSTA funds for. So you can't just use this funding to you know buy some signs that say come to the library it's a great place to be but you can say come to the library's program that we use lsta funds to to fund and then that kind of promotion is included any costs related to that kind of um, promotion now construction i want to explain that um specifically here um and this is imls rules um anything that is permanently affixed to the building is called a capital improvement and is not allowable through this federal funding. Um, if you have to hire outside contractors or anyone, um, construction trade people to come in and do installation, it's not allowed. Um, if the installation is, um, you can't, also you can't split up the item that you're getting installed and the installation cost um, and then only ask for this grant for the item because the thing is being actually physically attached to the building and you have to hire someone to come and install it permanently, that makes even the item you're installing not eligible for this particular grant. Um, what um, IMLS does allow is what they call, and this is their term, construction light. If your library staff or municipality staff can install something with their own tools, like a drill, a screwdriver, hammer in something, and then they could also, you know, take it off easily by unscrewing or pulling out the nails, that's allowable. So smaller type installations um, that you can do yourself, yes. Um, there is also a way to split up the project. However, if um, the installation can be considered its own project and the thing being installed does not depend on whatever that installation was. So for example, if you're doing an outdoor patio area, which a lot of libraries did over the last few years to get more, more um, activities and things going on, programming outside, um, installing a patio area, not eligible for this, but then buying the tables and chairs and whatever else that would sit on the patio, that would be eligible. So you would have this split up as a, pro that is a way to split up the project because the chairs to sit on there doesn't require that it be a something that was, you know, concrete that was poured. You could have put the chairs just out on the lawn if you wanted to. Um, so they are freestanding, they can be moved around and that's okay. If you're gonna be installing something permanently into the patio, that would not be allowed. Um, and then specifically about this is an example here about installing that construction light versus you know full on in, in installation. Um, if you're having a major um, you know security camera system and the cables have to be run and electricians have to come in and run new wiring and do all of that, that whole project, those cameras are not eligible because of how it's being installed. But if you buy like I have at my own house some security cameras that you just screw it into the you know, fence and then it goes works on Wi-Fi that would be allowable those wise cameras ring cameras those kind of um, security cameras so that's the difference between the kind of construction that is and is not um, eligible if you have any questions you're not sure about your project call me email me reach out to me and i can um, explain what you're doing and i can talk to you uh, through that and see if we can or cannot do it there is a match required of this for this grant, and this is a little different than the CE ones. Um, this is a 25% of the total project amount. Um, so if your project is um, $1,000, then you're responsible for 20, $250 worth of that, and we will pay, we will give you 750 for the other part. So um, it's 25% of the total project. So for our grants, for this grant, I say figure out how much you, 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 your project costs, and then you'll know how much you're responsible for and how much we are we would give you. Um, at least 10% has to be cash, um, but then you can use in-kind costs if you want to. In-kind means like someone volunteers their time or your um, 
or paying someone specifically to come in and do a program that can be part of your local match whatever you pay that person so um, part of it can be in kind it could, the whole 25 percent could be um, cash if you have it um, and that cash money can come from anywhere donations your foundation your friends um, however Another note to make here is that if you have anything that costs over $5,000, you must reach out and get a pre-approval from IMLS for that. You gotta contact me and then I contact them. And that means one item is worth 5,000, not the entire project. Um, I know some libraries have bought um, 3D, um, uh, like big pieces of makerspace equipment and the one piece of equipment um, a 3D printer, like the Glowforge 3D printers can be over 5,000 possibly. If you need to buy one of those and the individual piece of equipment costs more than 5,000, then we have to let me know and then we reach out and ask. Um, altogether, if things cost less than that, that's okay. The whole project can be however much it is, but if one particular, one specific item is over 5,000, we have to get approval. So reach out to me first about that. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, you do have to, um, because this is money that comes from the Institute Museum and Life Services, you do have to put this notice on anything that you put out about it on your website, promotions, um, mailings, whatever, that it is supported by the um, Institute Museum and Library Services under the provisions of the Library Services Technology Act administered by us here at the Commission. Um, and then the last major thing here is there is, you do need to have a unique identifier unique entity identifier number. This is because it is coming from funding coming from the federal government. Um, some of you may already have one because you've been doing grants with us over the last few couple of years and this is already a requirement. So if you don't, or if you're not sure, you can go to sam.gov, that's the government website um, where you can look up your um, number or get a number. All right, and then I'm gonna go briefly here into the form itself. Um, and this is uh, the information that's asked on here is comes to us through IMLS, the kind of things they need to ask. So you will see we need to ask you, uh, put your basic library info, what is the LLCA purpose that your project is, is um, about? Um, access to resources, research sharing, promoting literacy, et cetera. So pick whichever category you think it works, yours works best under. Um, we need a summary. Tell us what you're going to do. Um, What's the what's the point of the project? What do you want to do? This is a free text field. Type as much as you need to <laughs> into here. Uh, and then you need to choose the intent of the project, depending on which category you chose above, or digging down more into what exactly you're going to be doing. Um, what is the activity you're going to be doing? What is the grant actually, actually do? Um, if you're just buying something, buying equipment, supplies, hardware, software, whatever, it's procurement. Um, if you're getting into more content or programming, then you get into whichever one of these other categories there are. Um, who is it going to benefit? It can be just everyone. You can target a group and you can specify which group it is, if there is, if it does, you know, if it is something specific for one group of people. It's all optional depending on how you're doing it. Um, how um, which format are you going to be doing this? Is it going to be in, in, in for procurement? You don't have any. There's no sub answers underneath that. But for the other areas, you would decide is it in prospective, retrospective, acquisition? Are you just, you know, we have some more, you know, digging down, as I said, into what exactly you are doing. And if it is activity, what kind of program it is. And then what do you come, when you want to get out of this? What's your what's your goal with this programming? Um, how, you know, what will how will you figure out, you know, what's happening with this? Um, and then you put in your budget here and uh, we round to the nearest whole dollar for everything. So uh, we don't want to know about how many pennies something is. So round, round your numbers. Um, but this is what I was talking about here. If you're, um, you're buying computers and you think it's going to cost a thousand dollars, you would be requesting whoops, um, 750 and your local funds is 250 and that comes out to the 700 to the thousand. And then you just put in whichever category it falls under, whatever you're um, ordering, whatever you're asking for. Um, and then here underneath the budget is where you would specify, you know, up here it's just general computer equipment. Okay. Down here you gotta say, okay, we're gonna buy in a Dell model, blah, 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 with this much memory, et cetera, et cetera, with a monitor and this keyboard. Details and details is where you put down there. Put your identifier number that you've come up with here. If you are buying something that will connect to the internet like computers, you would have to be SIPA compliant. If you're buying something, if you're requesting something that's not 
connecting anything to the internet, you um, do not have to be SIPA compliant. So just enter whichever you are here. And then there's a whole long list of things here. This used to be a whole separate page. We've made you read through and sign, but we just added a application form because this is federal funding, certain things that you have to agree to. Um, civil rights, non-discrimination, conflict of interest, copyright, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you can read through all of these and make sure you agree you're not gonna traffic in person and any do any trip um, human trafficking. I don't know what any libraries would do that in a program, <laughs> but it's, it's just one of the legal things you have to agree to. And then down here, just like the internship, you just, um, this is where you agree and you legally sign the application here and submit it. Um, there's no extra paperwork to submit to um, apply for the grant. Hey, okay. any questions about library improvement grants, the federal library improvement grants? You can type in the questions section. Let me know if you have any questions about what you can do, what you can't do, clarification about the anything on the form. Let's see here. Yeah, good question. Um, this is something we have kind of talked about, but um, now yeah. the question is: Is there a minimum um, minimum amount that can be requested on this grant? Uh, no, there's no minimum you have to um, reach for any of our grants. Well, the only one that has specific amounts is the um, internship grant because it's either 500 or 1000 but there's no minimum you have to request and there's no maximum that you can request um, we do have a budget of a certain amount of money for each of these grants uh, um, so we know how much is available um, but for you what we want from you for this grant um, um, and for the youth one that we're going to talk about next is just tell us what you want and then we'll decide how much we can give you um, just tell us what your project is, how much you think it's going to cost. Um, so there's no minimum you have to be asking for, and there's no maximum you can ask for that you have to stop at. Um, uh, tell us how much you, you think it's going to be and in the budget here, and then um, we'll be able to decide on our side. And then and give us a lot of detail uh, also if you're doing something large about how much each thing costs. And that will help us if we decide to do partial grants, because we will give partial grants out for this. We do that a lot. Um, we want to help you, but we don't have enough to cover the whole thing. But we can give you, you know, we're going to buy these five different pieces of makerspace equipment. OK, we can cover two of them. And so we'll give you this much money for those two. And you'll have to find funding for the others. Uh, we have had very often in um, this has happened is once the state, state of Nebraska, gives you a grant, other grant issuing um, organizations are more, um, that's good. You know, you can say to them, hey, look, the state thinks this is a good project. They've given us some money, but we still need more. And that gives you kind of points towards applying for their grants as well. Um, so uh, we say just tell us what your project is, tell us how much you want, and then we'll see what we can do for you. So no minimums, no maximums. But be aware we do have a budget. <laughs> so with that mentioned, the budget, mm -hmm. I do want to say, and if this is still true, that if you have a youth project that's going to, for example, have maker spaces that youth can handle, they could request a library improvement grant mm -hmm. instead of a youth grant for excellence, depending on what they where they think it fits better. True. Yep. Um, yes, you can do, and you can apply for more than one of these grants. You're not restricted to only doing one or the other. Um, I don't know if we've had, we've probably had some libraries do all four <laughs> in, a, in a year, um, but we've definitely had libraries do both a youth or a library improvement. Um, but so if something is definitely a youth project, you definitely want to go for the youth grant. But you may also do this one. We actually had a library last year that did um, the items they wanted to do a program for they did the youth grant for but then the they needed a special uh, they wanted an extra cabinet um furniture type thing a freestanding cabinet to store all the equipment the makerspace the youth makerspace equipment and so they did that as a library improvement grant because it was going to be used for that could be used for something else later too but they split it up between the two grants and the, and we gave them both <laughs> um uh, couldn't really do one without the other. So, so that's the thing too, we talk to each other. So if you do do something like that, let's, we, I'll let you know, Sally and I do talk. <laughs> so we do con consult with each other and say, do you have any grants from anyone that we also have? So let's work out that out together to see what we can do for these libraries. So um, yeah, you can definitely do some something from here and something from the youth grant. All right, I don't see any other questions coming in. 
So I am going to get back to the library grants page and we are just getting close to 11 o'clock. That's okay. We always run a little long on this one talking about our grants, <laughs> but we are up to the last one anyway. So um, stick around with us. We'll go as long as it takes to get through Sally's um, Youth Grants for Excellence. And if anyone has any questions, get them into the questions section right now. We'll answer any questions you have about any of our grants before we wrap up for today. Um, if you have to leave because you only allotted the hour, that's fine. We're recording, of course, and you can come back and watch later um, if you want to. So let's go into the Youth Grants for Excellence now, Sally. I'll bring that up for you. As I mentioned, same thing as the um, Library Improvement Grants. Libraries are wrapping up their 2023 ones. So we have a link for that. But you want to apply for 2024, you click on the big link at the top here. So and go a, ahead. Few, a few things I want to mention before we kind of go a little bit down this list is that we have uh, this last year and this year, we've made a, an effort to make the grant applications more consistent, particularly between the library improvement grants and the youth grants for excellence. So some of the things that you may notice have changed if you've written youth grants before is, first off, the library um, improvement grants and the youth grants for excellence, we're both asking you to figure out what is this total project going to cost? So like Chris has said, if it's $1,000, then you know that you're going to ask probably ask for a $750 grant amount and provide a $250 local match amount. Um, in the past, I've had people say, oh, I want $1,000 from the library commission. That means blah, blah, blah. Well, it doesn't work. Th that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Figure out what it's going to cost you to do this project. And um, if you're lucky, you might get the whole thing um, awarded to you or you might get a, a lesser amount another thing this year for the first time i used to have a minimum amount you could ask for because i thought being a responsible person we should make it something worthwhile to do all the paperwork for but that's not really the point the point is you have a project you want to do and if your project's going to cost a hundred dollars and you need some money from us why should it matter that i had a 250 and fifty um, minimum grant amount before so that is gone you can ask for what you need like Krista had said so if it's a hundred dollar total project you're going to get a $75 grant and a $25 match amount mm -hmm. and the again that I'll just reiterate what um, Krista had said in the past I've always said you can't spend any money until you are uh, awarded and contacted that you are receiving the grant that is gone um so right now as krista said you can buy something today but remember as she said that there's no guarantee you'll actually get a grant so you have to be sure you can handle it if you don't get a grant from us you might have another uh organization you're thinking of talking to about that but i just kind of wanted to hit those things first and now we'll look a little bit at the grant information here Another thing too that libraries might have recognized, we changed this last year, although it kind of changed before that because there's CARES Act and ARPA and things got weird. Um, there used to be different grant applications for youth depending on how much you were asking for. Yes. And that's another thing that Sally decided to, that was just, let's just, same thing, simplify it. Instead of deciding which grant do I apply for, there's just one grant application for youth grants no matter what you're applying for. There's not the lower, less money and more money versions of the application form. There's just a single one. Thank you. That's a good point, too. Um, so looking down through this uh, information here, there's some good information here. I'm not going to read through all of it. But as you can see, again, the eligible entities are accredited Nebraska public libraries. But if you are an unaccredited library, contact a neighbor library if you want to, the library down the road who is accredited, and see if there's a project you can work on together and share in the um, the items that are purchased. At least half will need to go into the accredited public library, but that means you get the other half in your library and you both have a project happening, which would be great. Or also you could, as uh, Chris had mentioned, work with an institutional library. You can, can see the list here, the state-run institutional library, if there's a project that works for both of you in that way. Um, we talked a bit about the deadlines and, and timetables and some guidelines here, some 
one thing I oh, I try to emphasize every year, and we'll get to it again when we hit the grant application form, is the under what is required for a youth grants for excellence application under pro project application guidelines. Details. I do have people write in and they say, we want to buy 20 books for young adults. That's nice. If you know which, or if you have an idea of which books you're, you're thinking of, please send a list. That helps my team look at it. You are not required to buy only those books if you send me a list. This is an, giving us an idea of what kinds of titles you're thinking of. Um, if you don't if you don't know yet, then just say we want to buy 20 titles. We want to buy ones that will, you know, some graphic novel, some other kind, or however you want to say it, just to give us a little bit more information as to what you're actually looking at. And for the youth grants, each grant project must have at least one program, an event design designed for the project, attended by youth, and usually held in the library, but sometimes they might be out on the on the lawn or or at, the, um, at a school, if that's going to work better. But you, some, lots of people, lots of times people have open houses to show the community, here's what our project was, here's what we've been doing. We want you all to know about this. But if you have a program for youth, be they preschool or teens, you need to have, you can have as many as you want, but you need to have at least one program event so that, yes, um, it was great with the ARPA grants because people could just buy books for their library and that was terrific. But you can, with these, this project, I won't be funding that. If you want to do something about uh, coding and you want to buy so many coding books for your collection, that's fine. But I'm not going to uh, uh, approve an application saying we need to up our nonfiction collection and we want to buy 40 nonfiction books. It needs it needs to have more of a project approach to it than uh, improving your collection because every library in the state would apply for that if I la allowed that. Okay, so then there's some some information about projects that will be eligible, and these are not the only projects. This is just trying kind of trying to give you some ideas of what you might consider. I think a real important thing here is the exemplary sample applications. Could you? Oh, sh you're fast. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at go, well, what is that? <laughs> Take a look at these. They're exemplary because they put in, one main thing is they put in more detail than a lot of people do. And I know you have a limited amount of time to fill out these forms. I understand that. But the more you can tell me about your ideas, the, the better it will. This is one of my favorite ones. I don't want to scare you off, but if you scroll down through this a little bit, Krista, you will come to where she writes down. Um, here is her monthly program format, and she's got her her things all laid out as to what she's going to do. This is the most detailed application I have ever received for children's or teen programming. So it doesn't have to be at this level, but she really had it planned out. And and later she said, you know. One of the good things about this was I knew exactly what I was doing throughout the whole pro project because it already was all laid out there. I didn't have to scramble around and say, what books did I need? What it was, it was all laid out. So planning, 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 and look at this timeline of when she's gonna do it. No, yeah, kind of taking this idea and breaking it up into bits too, I think helps. It, it does help. It and yes, family. she got funded. <laughs> we think of, um, okay, and then, Let's see, let me scroll down some more. We we do on this other page, if you go back to the information page again, mm -hmm. we do have ineligible costs. So now, oh uh, yes, the youth grants, most of the time we use state funding for them. So that's different from the federal funding. And this will make you happy because with state funding, you can, and also we're working with kids and teens, you can buy, little trinkets and little things that they love to get and um, or a, a book if they finish a certain part of this project they can receive a book you can buy those things with the grant funding um, but uh, furniture or food or beverages you can't buy with this 
Payment of salaries or wages for permanent library staff? No, you can use permanent library staff funding as an in-kind match. So you say, okay, it took our children's librarian this much time to plan and hold these programs. So, and we paid her for that. So here's our match. You can, you can do that. Um, the all work stations again are, or similar stations are not eligible. And you can see these things here. Also, I also have the acknowledgement statement that you need to put into things. You know, if you're having an article in the newspaper or something, we appreciate you putting this in to explain to everybody where did the funding come from for this. And then down at the bottom of this page, again, is the application form. And take a look, whoops, I just, I just lost where I am. That's okay. This, I probably should have made it more exactly like yours, but we kept no. this this form the the questions and the things that break down on the uh, on the library improvement grant is because that's what lsta that's what imls is asking of us when we have to report back on that app that, those, that those grant funds that's why it's so detailed with those specific questions um since this is just coming from state funds we you don't need to get that uh, precise with it so we the category of grant i'm starting to think maybe i should get rid of that because it just confuses people all I'm asking there is just a general statement of, um, you know, encouraging reading or rewarding a thousand books before yeah, kindergarten. Be like the the general like executive summary, maybe a short description yeah. of what we're going to do. It's yes, kind of pretty much that. Yes. So we maybe I just need to rephrase it to executive summary. That's a good idea. Then. Um, wait for it oh yes a couple of goals one goal is plenty you can have two sometimes people put in like seven and i'm thinking you're working too hard on the goals because that's that's a lot that's a lot to try to accomplish and then this number three description of program or activities here's where the details can really come in helpful and you can say we're going to have you know, something for uh, elementary age kids, and we're going to do this and this and this and this. Tell us what you, this again. I forgot to mention this is a plan. This is your plan. It's going to change. By the time you're actually doing this project, three of those things will drop out, and two others, two new ones will come in. That's okay because plans are made to be changed. And things change while you're not looking. Costs and availability of people and everything changes. So we know that. Just send me an email saying, well, I can't do the the sewing project anymore. Instead, I'd like to do a sequence. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to do that. But anyway, I should have practiced some things to be examples. Then the timeline, you know. So you're starting with this. You're going to get some gather some things together get some advertising going have these programs on these days this is what you're planning now days might change we all know that and then um identify youth need on which this project is based that can that can be hard for people too because it can be as anything as much as three different parents come in and say can't you do something to help our kids develop their their eye-hand coordination, we've been working with them at home, but are there, are there any projects you could do at the library so they cut things out with safety scissors and, and glue things together? And, you know, if you have a uh, community requested this, so I'm trying to offer it. And then just a little bit about what staff is gonna be working with this. And means of evaluation. I spend a lot of time describing what kinds of evaluation you might include, but that's to help you get thinking about you know i've been all focused on how to do this but i haven't really thought about what is it i'm aiming for and how will i know if i got there and that's where this question comes in and then um then the budget and again we you have um items library materials will be anything from construction paper and markers that they they're going to be using up might be adding that could be 
program materials actually and supplies. People put things in all kinds of places. I have a way to find out what they are. Library materials might be, I'm buying 10 books about coding because that's my project. And then that, so all together, you'll end up with your estimated total project budget. That's the total project cost you think you're gonna have. And then you put in the 75% for what you're going to request from the library commission. And then you're going to put down, what is your cash match? Um, it might be $100 because the friends group is giving you $100 for this project. And then the rest might be some kind of in-kind, either the children's librarian person's time or something else, so that you come up with the total match amount and everything works together. And it won't let you put in bad numbers. No, it will, it will check your math. <laughs> it will check your and like you said here, you know, if you're not sure what something category it goes into, you know, put whatever up here, but then down here, yeah. yes. where you're going to explain, okay, this is what I really meant. And here we have the explanations, definitions of anything added to the library's collection, um, personnel costs, um, materials in here, the different program materials, things will be expended, like the construction paper and what stuff that stuff that gets used up. So you can see down here the definitions of which what each category is. So it might be a good idea to look he down here first and see, oh, that means this. So now I'll go up here and yeah. change the amounts to go in the right categories. Perfect. And give me as much detail as you can. Like you're not, I know you're not buying computers because I said you couldn't, but if you're buying the um, button maker, mm -hmm. the Brant 945Z button maker, tell me that. It's this button maker of supposed to come with this and this and it's supposed to be this much money yep we and want details about what you're going to use the money for too yeah for this and library improvement grant in in this area and then one area right underneath the budget in that one model numbers amounts what yeah. you've looked up now we know from when you submit these to when you buy something prices will change um, they will some we've had things where somebody said i want to buy this piece of equipment and then you know four months from now that piece of equipment no longer exists so i need to buy something else that's okay <laughs> but tell us at first what you're going to do and things can always be changed later but we, the most detail of what you've you you've looked up is what we're going to want so that's why I'm, I'm looking for specific information as to what did you mean by 10 books about coding and you don't have to type it the titles in this form if you don't want to, if you have a list, if you pull some things from Amazon and you have a printout list, you can just either email a scanned copy of that to me or mail it in US mail because I will attach it to the whole form and my team that looks at the grant applications will appreciate having that information. And we also know that one of those books is not going to be available anymore too, but this gives an idea of what you have in mind. Mm -hmm. And then again, fill out, uh, put in your your name and and who you are, and submit the application. And you should get a copy of this too mm -hmm. in your email. So um, occasionally things go go sideways and and you don't. And if you don't, I can send you a copy of what I received. So just ask me if you don't get one. They're going, what happened? Just email me and say, I don't seem to have a copy. Would you send me what I submitted? Sure, I will. Are there any questions or concerns about what I've said? I don't see. All right, yeah, does anybody have, I do have, I do see a question that did come in, um, but just a reminder, would you have any other questions about the youth grants or about the application form or um, anything? Um, Get into the questions section. Um, we do have a question here that I can answer right from here. Someone wants to know, is there a place to find, and we talked about this, project ideas that were funded by this grant in the past? Um, yes, these are some ideas of what libraries have done, but then there are also these sample applications that you can look at and read the full applications. Um, so there's those, there's just these ideas, but also what I'm gonna show now, since we keep talking about it, we haven't actually looked at it yet, um, we have this grant recipients database. Actually, I'm going to go right back to here. And you'll see it linked on each of our pages, but it's also here as well. Um, and this is a database that has um, every grant that we have awarded. Um, as you can see here, these are the grants that are included going back quite a few years. Uh, the youth grants used to be called children's grants going back to 1998. Um, 
uh, LSTA grants going back to 1998. So all of these are in the stage. We have this one giant database of every single thing we've ever given out. So if you want to, you can look up a particular grant, for example, youth, and you can look up a year if you want to, or you can just say, give me all the youth grants for excellence. And then you'll see, and now this is not gonna give the full application, but um, either a description or the title they gave to the grant, depending on what information we put into here, but some basic information, and you can see how much they have received and when it was, um, here you go, junior STEM program. So you can go in here and get ideas for what you might wanna do looking through all these grant applications if you want to. Um, you can also see if you were wondering if um, your library, you might be new to the library, have we gotten a grant before? You can look up, and I'm just gonna choose Ainsworth at the top. I don't know what's gonna come up, I'll tell you. But, oh good, they have gotten some things. And you can see what um, a particular community has received. Uh, so if you're wondering if your library has done something before, um, you can look up here and see what has been, um, what they have done. So this could give you some ideas of um, what to apply for as well for any of the any of the grants. And we have all of our grants here, our internship grants are here as well. Even though there's that separate page that I have, it's also in this database as well. Um, and you'll and we'll you know we'll point out here some grants did change the names of them over the years. So library improvement grant and um, LSTA grant, you're gonna have to look them up separately because we changed the name of it after 2007. The youth grants were changed after 2003, so you will have to look for both categories uh, if you want to see everything. And please email or call and ask questions if like tomorrow you're going, well, I, I wonder about this or that, would that be eligible? Give me a call. Give Krista mm -hmm. a call or send an email and just ask because we're happy to answer questions and, and let you know if what you're considering is, is eligible. Yeah. Like I said, with the, the youth grants are generally state funding. And so mm -hmm. the things that, that the federal government won't let you do, not construction, not furniture, but <laughs> the, the, the fun things, you know, like a t-shirt. <laughs> like people that wanted to buy 10 t-shirts for the kids who made a certain level of, of a teen program. Well, teens love t-shirts, so. <laughs> and they love those buttons, I'm Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that is our four grants that we are offering this year. Um, does anybody have any other questions um, you want to ask about any of the grants? Um, ask of me, Holly, or Sally um, about the seeing training, internship, library improvement, or youth. Um, type into your questions section. We'll answer all your questions right now if you have any you want to ask right now. Um, or as Sally just said, you can reach out to any of us about each of the grants. CE and training would be Holly, internship and library improvement would be me, and youth would be Sally, of course. So you can reach out to us anytime with any questions. Uh, the deadline to apply for all these grants is November 17th, so it's just opened up yet last week, as I said, so you have a couple of months now to figure out what you want to do and submit applications. Reach out to us with questions if you're not sure if something's eligible or what category should go under. Um, just contact us. I've already answered some questions from people in the in, um, email, um, and we will um, let you know. Something else I meant to mention is um, if you submit an application this week, great. It will go in the list. if you submit the application and then in a month you go, wait a minute, I forgot about this and this and this. Submit another one. Mm -hmm. What I usually do is I call you and say, you know, you have these two different, and you'll say, well, yeah, skip the first one and go with the second one. We can do that, yes, yes. We can do that. I don't, I don't assume that the second one supersedes the first one because sometimes people will apply. Oh, I'm gonna apply for a, a youth grant for kindergarten nurse. And then they go, wait, I haven't done anything with teens. And then a month later, they submit something else for teens. Well, I'm going to ask you, did mm -hmm. you, and yes, you can submit more than one application for you. I was going to say yes, you can, because I already said you can, you can apply for all of these grants you want to, but you can submit multiple grants in each, well, except for the internship one, um, for each one of these, you can apply for multiple things um, if you want to. Uh, and that may be a good idea as well, um, rather than doing like one grant application for everything you wanna do, if it's two like, like for library improvement grants, two separate kind of projects that you're thinking of, 
separate out in two different grant applications. And then we also have the ability then because of our limited, slightly limited you know, amount of funding we have, we can say, well, we can give you one, but not the other. Okay. Rather than trying to figure out from this giant project, grant grant application well which things had to do with what you know think about it like like so I said, teen and, and children's that's an obvious separation um you want makerspace stuff and you want but then you want new computers that could be two different library improvement grants so think about that and that's okay you can apply for you can submit multiple ones and we'll evaluate them together and, and decide what we can do for you All right, I don't see any other questions coming in. Something else I do want to mention, because we were talking about the things that we can and cannot um, fund through these grants. When you um, look here in our grants pull out, flyout menu here, there's also something here that are under other funding sources. And there is this grant opportunities for Nebraska libraries page. This is a page that I maintain with other grants um, and funding resource opportunities that you could possibly apply for. So if it is something that we can't cover because of our rules that you have, there might be other grants here that could um, cover them, especially construction related things, construction, capital projects, um, those kind of things that we can't do. There are lots of programs in here that you could apply for instead. Um, we have links first up here to our grants and then our regional library systems, all have scholarship grants, that's for attending things. But then if there's something new coming up with a new um, grant program, um, a new deadline coming up, I have them listed up here right now. Here's a couple that are um, all open right now. Um, and then I have just a long list of all sorts of things you can apply for. Library Association, Nebraska Library Association is a couple of scholarship and professional development grants. But there are lots of other organizations that you can apply for. And these are the kind of things I was talking about where it will, you know, if we can give you a partial grant, then maybe you can go to one of these, like your community foundation, the arts council, or um, somewhere and say, hey, the state or gave us money, can you help fund the rest of it? Um, I've got here, I've highlighted what deadlines are for some of these. Many of these just have ongoing applications. Some they've already passed for this year, but they're annual, so there'll be one for next year if you hadn't gotten this years yet. But things like this, community development block grants. This is for construction or rehabilitation facilities. This is something you could have applied for for actual construction and you know, renovations and installation of things onto your building. Um, and libraries are listed actually under public works. This is from the Department of Economic Development here in Nebraska. Um, there's also civic and community center financing fund, same kind of thing um, to construct or improve facilities and libraries are mentioned. Um, USDA Community Facilities Grants and Loans. That's something specifically for um, doing this kind of construction things. Um, and there's just all sorts of other um, great things here. Um, T-Mobile is doing ongoing grants. Um, this is one new one I learned about from another library in Nebraska, 4imprint. You see commercials for 4imprint, that's all the you know personalized things that you can you know, have your library's logo on. They give out grants every single day to nonprofits and libraries have received them. So um, if you want to, um, like, I want a bunch of um, bags, you know, to give out, to give all the equipment to the, all the stuff we're buying for the kids, apply for a 4 imprint grant and you might be able to get them to um, supply that for you. Um, and lots of other local foundations, the railroads, et cetera, et cetera. So look through here and see if there's something else that you could apply for. Um, I also have links down here for just for even more. There's so much out there. There's so many grants. These are ones that I've highlighted. And as I heard, see of new ones I think might be good for you, I add to this page. But there's even more beyond this. Um, ALA grants, tons of those. Um, there's specific grants page for schools, K-12 schools. Um, I highly recommend signing up for this Grant Station weekly newsletter. It's a free newsletter of new things coming out. Um, they do have something where you can pay them to get more resources and, and activities or resources and things you can get, but you don't have to. Um, they will send out this free newsletter with links to um, grants. I get a lot of my ideas from there um, as well. So if we can't supply something to you, can't grant, give you the money for something, or if we don't give, can't give you a full grant, I, we will refer you to this um, and you can go there and find even um, more opportunities. All right, I think that will wrap it up for today. I don't see any other questions that came in while I was um, babbling away there. <laughs> um, any last words, Holly or Sally, or are we good to go? I think I, I think I covered everything, but give me 10 minutes later after we sign off and I'll remember something. 
All right, I think I will wrap it up for today's show. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. Um, apply for grants. We have money, we need to give it away. <laughs> um, my income is live page. There we go. <laughs> so that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, the show has been recorded, as they all are, and will be in our archives. These are our upcoming shows for the rest of this year. Um, you'll see there's some open dates still. I'm working on getting descriptions for other ones that are going to be filling in there, but here's some that we've gotten on our schedule. Um, but our archives are right here. The most recent one is at the top of the page here. So today's will be posted there by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, everyone who attended today's session and registered will get an email from me letting you know that it's there. We also push it out onto our Facebook page. This is our Encompass Live Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We also post to Twitter and Instagram using our Encomp Live hashtag um, and onto our mailing list, um, Rascal Library Commission mailing lists too. So um, we push out information about that everywhere. So you've got, here's a reminder to log in today's show, needs of speakers, and then here is, um, there I go. The recordings of previous sessions announced on here too. So you can keep an eye on what we're doing out there as well. Um, this is our full show archives. You can search this if you want to, to see if we've done a topic on an, um, a show on a topic you may be interested in. Um, this is our full show archive. I always give this warning and I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because it's a giant page, but this goes back to when Encompass Live first premiered in January, 2009. So we're going on our I think next year is going to be 15 years, ah. <laughs> but pay attention to the original broadcast date whenever you do watch a recording. Uh, many of the shows will be fine and stand the test of time and still be good, useful info, but some things will become old and outdated. Websites, um, links may be broken. Um, resources and services may have changed drastically. People may work at a totally different library than when they presented for us 10 years ago, but every session has an original broadcast date on it so you know when it actually happened. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Uh, next week is the last Wednesday of the month, which usually, as you can see from other sessions here, and if you look at our archives, is our Pretty Sweet Tech Day, where Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes on. But she's on vacation next week, so we are taking a break. Uh, so there's no show next week. We're off taking a break um, while she's off on vacation. And But we will be back on October 4th to talk about Apple in Kansas, <laughs> training for new library directors. Um, this is a Robin Hastings, who's at the Northeast Kansas Library System, they have a program for um, an intensive training program for new library directors, and she's going to talk about what they're doing there down in Kansas. So please do sign up and join us for that. Um, also, for those of you looking and wondering about Sally's presentations, uh, they're on the schedule now as of yesterday, her usual annual presentations. These are things that she's usually done at our Nebraska Library Association conference and then redoes them here. Um, there is no conference this year or skipping year, but Best New Children's Books of 2023, Best New Teen Reads of, um, oops, that's gotta say 2023, I will fix that, sorry. And Summer Reading Program for 2024, yeah, starting to think about next year, Adventure Begins at Your Library. Those three sessions have been booked, so if you are, um, have been scheduled, so if you're looking for those, um, register for those and any of our other ones coming up and the new ones I'll be filling in. So that wraps it up for today. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Holly, thanks, Sally. Um, Thank you. We, we got a lot talked about, but I think it'll yeah. be very helpful. Yeah, um, apply for grants. There we go. Apply for our grants. All right. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>